So you've got a lot of information you need to get across in your book, but you don't want to get caught info dumping, inundating the reader with so much exposition that she feels distanced from the story. Do you pare down all your info to the barest possible facts? Do you just dump it in there and hope the reader won't get bored? The answer is neither. You use a very simple technique to get all the relevant info into your story while ensuring that your reader remains engaged throughout. And this technique is called general, specific, personal. Now, maybe I should have given it a better name, but the fact is general, specific, personal is exactly what it sounds like. You begin by making a general statement that lays out the information you want to give the reader. The preparation for the king's hunt had begun and the field was teeming with life. Human, yes, but also animal, horses, great mastiffs, and a pair of hooded falcons. You follow it up with one specific detail. Near me, some stable boys had waded into a mud puddle in pursuit of a trio of misbehaving hounds, and all four of them were slick with grime. And then you bring it home with something personal, something rooted in the character's unique perspective. A crisp wind blew through the field, and I pulled my ermine cloak tighter around me, feeling a trifle sorry for the boys. But they were used to being cold, weren't they? I, their queen, was not. And that's all there is to it. The first step is where the real exposition happens, where you clearly state the facts that you need the reader to know. And I like to think of this step as setting up the canvas for the reader. You're defining the parameters for everything you're about to tell them. Then you just color in one small corner of that canvas with your specific statement. And by doing so, you make all that general information from step one feel much more real and immediate. Lastly, you anchor everything in the character's experience, and this makes the reader feel that they're not being told information, rather, they're experiencing a story. You can use this technique to get across the complicated rules of your fantasy world. To work magic, you had to perform music. A simple spell could be tooted out on your flute, but a larger working required a more complex arrangement. To fix the village aqueduct last month, an entire symphony had been required with lutes, harps, maracas, and the village elder, Hadrian, coming in on his horn at just the right moment. It was delicate work with each instrument carefully accounted for, and so there had been no spot in the orchestra for Linny. She had been relieved when father told her there was no part for her to play. She knew, everyone knew apparently, that there was no way she would have made it through the first movement without making a mistake that would have doomed them all. You can use it to introduce a historical character and his background. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle had made his name as the writer of the inimitable Sherlock Holmes novels, but since the death of his son Kingsley, he had preferred to spend his time seeking a connection to the spirits of the dead. He had been taken in again and again by spiritualists, fortune tellers, and a pair of supposed telepaths. His credulous reputation should have reassured me, but I was uneasy as I took my seat at the seance table and prepared to go into my act. I had the strangest feeling that this grief-stricken man sitting across from me might be the one to finally see through my mask to the secret beneath. I'd never contacted the spirit realm. I didn't even believe in it. You can also use it to explain the details of legal proceedings, medical knowledge, tricks of a particular trade, anything you want the reader to know. Often, when we try to avoid info dumping, we do it by trying to pare down the information we give our readers to the bare minimum, but this is the wrong way to go about it. Your readers want this information. They want to understand your world and feel immersed in it. They just also want to feel at every moment that they're inhabiting a story. Okay, so you've got your exposition down, but now what are you going to do to keep your reader interested throughout the scene? Well, if you're like me, you ask yourself six specific questions about each scene before you get started. I shared those questions in this video and I love them because they keep me driving for consequences and tension in every scene and ensure that my characters keep getting deeper into the soup.